Alright, welcome everyone. This is Wasabi Research Club number uh, 16 maybe. And today we are going to talk about um, something that we started researching. And this will be a um, different research club from everything as was before. Because from now on we are not going to review papers, but we are going to to actually research so this will become a research club and not a review club and we will get back reviewing papers as soon as we stop researching and uh, here we have today um, Istvan and Yuval who are working with me right now on Wobby Sabi which is a trustless which is where we are trying to achieve trustless and arbitrary coin joins. And why is it important? What's, what's the logic behind it? Um, if you have ever used coin joins before, at least with Wasabi, then you might have noticed that you have a lot of change and you cannot actually send money in the coin joins to other people. And these are the problems that we are trying to solve and for that we first have to very quickly go through how coin joins are being done in 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 a design level in a architecture level and it all comes down to three main phases which is input registration every user comes together and register their inputs then output registration uh, the users register their desired outputs and then finally um, a coin join uh, is built and everyone has to sign and why this is important is because this guarantees security so if you don't see your desi desired input a desired output in the coin join then you don't sign your output uh, you don't sign the coin join so the coin join will be invalid and it will, will not happen so this is why you cannot lose money in coin joins now going further um, think about how to how to register inputs and outputs to the coin join in an anonymous way because uh, these input registrations should not be connected together with each other and neither the output registrations. And for that, there are actually two school of thoughts. Uh, one is the coin shuffle school of thought when they build their own anonymity network to make sure the anonymity is um, <clears throat> ensured within the anonymity set which is all the users of that coin join in wasabi <clears throat> uh, it's different because there we are leveraging an existing anonymity network called the tor network where uh, but it could be any any other anonymity network where every input registration and every output registration must happen with different anonymity network identities so <clears throat> no one can figure out what's the link there. Um, however, this brings up a great problem here because <clears throat> if you can register outputs to a coin join anonymously, then what would prevent you from registering as many outputs as you like? I mean, it's anonymous. And that's what we are trying to find a solution to how to register arbitrary amount of inputs and arbitrary how to register inputs with arbitrary amounts and outputs with arbitrary outputs, uh, arbitrary amounts. And it's important, the arbitrary part is important here because 
a non-arbitrary way to register, uh, a non-arbitrary way to to prevent denial of service attacks, like registering many outputs would be what Wasabi Wallet is doing right now, is that you have to have some uh, denominations there and uh, that way with some blind signature magic which we will go into later then we could make sure that there are no denial of service attacks however if the amounts are arbitrary then this whole scheme doesn't work anymore because um, we have to the new question becomes how to ensure a user does not register more money in output registration than he provided inputs for but without knowing that which user registered which inputs and and which outputs so the link should not be there the link should not be there between input and input registration of users and output and output registration of users and input and output registration of users so that's what we are trying to solve at the first phase of this uh, research work. Is a Pedersen commitment scheme, which I think I'm going to give over the explanation to Yuval. Would you like to explain uh, what 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 was our very first? Uh, way of thinking um, which we only saw the splitting of inputs at, at that point. Could you explain that? Uh, okay, so uh, first I, I did want to add to your introduction that uh, for now we're not yet thinking about the structure of the transaction, how it ends up. Uh, so uh, that's like out of scope for uh, today's discussion, but it's still a, very much a concern. So um, anyway, with that out of the way, I d don't actually exactly remember um, what signature scheme we wanted to use, but um, the uh, idea of a, a Pedersen commitment is if you have an elliptic curve uh, or any uh, sort of group where the uh, discrete log assumption, uh, uh, hardness assumption holds, uh, you can take uh, two points on the curve called uh, generators, um, and typically in Patterson commitments, those are called uh, H and G. And you can um, multiply these two points by uh, two numbers. Um, so one of those would be the, uh, uh, the actual message, uh, and the other would be uh, randomness. And uh, this creates, um, uh, and, and then you can sum those two values together. And this is something that is um, somewhat analogous to uh, a hash with uh, salt, uh, or maybe uh, an HMAC. Um, but the idea is like you, because you, because the discrete log problem is hard, um, it's, it should be uh, impossible for anybody to figure out uh, what values did you multiply. So what were your numbers that went into this thing? Um, but then uh, if you publish the the sum of these two products, um, then uh, you can later prove uh, with which values, um, like you, you actually multiplied those generators. And um, the reason that you have uh, two of these uh, so if you only multiply a single generator by uh, a, a number, uh, I believe that's what's called a Pedersen hash. Um, and, and the idea is that um, like if the messages are uh, like kind of easy to guess, then having an additional uh, uh, randomness term uh, makes it like impossible to uh, brute force that as well. And the key difference to sort of keep in mind for uh, the purpose of this discussion is that unlike uh, traditional hash functions, um, because the um, the group operation, the addition of points on the curve is uh, commutative, uh, this means that um, you have... Uh, um, like it doesn't matter in which order you do this, and uh, the sum of uh, the messages going into this 
kind of hash function. Um, uh, if you take the, the sum of several Patterson commitments, then what you get back out is a Patterson commitment to the sum of the messages, which is a very useful property. Um, I guess back to you. Thank you. I will risk sounding stupid and I try to explain it again in, 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 in some less technical terms. So how we imagined to solve this issue of unlinkability between inputs and outputs would be that uh, we figured if we if we have let's say one bitcoin and we want to get an get outputs uh, 0.1 and 0.9 bitcoins then we create two pedders and commitments uh, more because uh, there are zeros, but let's just not care about that. Uh, we create two pedders and commitments for 0 0.1 and 0 0.9, and at input registration, we prove that that these two pedders and commitment, the, the 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 sum is one bitcoin that our input and also have some range proofs there but again that's a that, that's a detail at this point and and we also found the blind patterns and commitment scheme uh, which enables us to get a blind signature for the message of the patterns and commitment without the, the the coordinator knowing the the actual values there so give back the blind signatures for the users and now the users have unblinded those signatures and the users have two signatures for for 0 0.1 bitcoin and 0 0.9 bitcoin at, and at output registration it can come with two different anonymity network identity and for once it registers the 0 0.1 Bitcoin and provides the unblinded signature and for twice it registers the 0 0.9 Bitcoin and provides the unblinded signature and this way the coordinator cannot tell because it has never seen these signatures before it cannot tell which input it signed uh, those, those values for and that's that that was the basic working idea that we had however if you think about it it does not enable consolidating inputs so if i have five inputs and i want to make only one output of that then i cannot do it with this scheme so for this we figured out uh, istvan figured out that it could be possible with the BLS uh, blind BLS signature protocol and I would like to give the words to Istvan uh, could you explain the blind BLS signature protocol that we figured out and by the way this is not our our state of the art idea but it is it it is good to mention because it it, it works, but it's quite complex. So State of the art from last week, yes. <laughs> but we killed it really badly. Um, maybe, I don't know if you can share your screen or I should, but maybe it would be helpful uh, for everyone if we can have a look at, at the GitHub issue. But if not, then uh, like, it's, so... It's and okay, please share your scare screen, but I cannot share it because it does not get recorded. But if anyone else shares it, it gets recorded. Okay, so um, like already Yuval motivated and also Nopara why we like um, Pedersen commitments. So the thing is that in this Wabi Sabi protocol, we need to prove um, statements in zero knowledge about um, about in input UTXO values. So whenever, for example, a user registers an input UTXO and he, she would like to register um, another or split this amount into two, let's say to a change address or a payment value, then we we need to allow users to create patterns and commitments and 
prove that the Pedersen commitments are formed in a good way. So meaning that the underlying commitment values add up to the input UTXO value. So, and, and with Pedersen commitments, we can do as already uh, Nopara and uh, Yuval described, we can really easily prove such uh, sum summation statements over committed values. Um, and then, okay, uh, the next idea was we love Pedersen commitments because they are homomorphic and they allow us to build um, and prove easily this uh, summing summation uh, statements. Then let's let's go with another really flexible signature scheme, namely BLS, which is kind of the most uh, the, the simplest signature scheme uh, you can ever imagine. Um, uh, so this is basically uh, the BLS signature scheme. Y you can see here. Um, no, this is sorry, the blind BLS signature scheme, which is still pretty simple. Um, so there's a blinding phase. We have a message M. We can blind it. Uh, so we first of all we hash the message, and the, with the generator in the elliptic curve group, we can blind it uh, with the randomness R. So we send the blinded message to the signer, which. Uh, in the Wasabi lingo or in the coin join literature, we would call their coordinator. So the coordinator gets a blinded message M, uh, M um, hat, let's say, and then the coordinator can unblind it with uh, his secret key. And then the receiver, no, sorry, the coordinator can sign this uh, blinded message and then the receiver unblinds it. So this is a three move um, signature scheme. And the big question was, like, uh, here we see a hash function, right? And Yuval already pointed out this feathers and hash we, we all love because of its homomorphic properties. So one question we needed to answer, what, what should be this hash function? Um, and let's, let's, let's pick now the feathers and hash because it preserves the algebraic structure of the message. So instead, if we would choose, if we would go with a hash function, which like SHA2, SHA3, KETSAK, then it would completely mess up the structure of the message. So it would have would be really difficult, so not trivial at all, how to prove statements between these um, blinded messages. And uh, yeah, so shall I just easily, uh, quickly, let let me just first um, explain like the input registration phase. So we have a public value. Uh, let's let's just take this example. We have a public value m, which which uh, you can you should think of m as a as a satoshi amount, which is the satoshi amount of your input uh, registered input, and then you would like to split this uh, m, your input UTXO, into two output UTXO values, but you don't want to reveal them to the coordinator. So you want to create, uh, you want to split it into M1 and M2. Uh, and additionally, you want to prove to the coordinator um, that the sum of M1 and M2 adds up to M, right? Um, you send the coordinator to the blinded messages. The blinded messages are um, patterns and commitments to M1 and M2 with uh, randomness, randomness is R1 and R2. So just by giving M1 and M2 um, the blinded messages to the coordinator, the coordinator will have no clue whatsoever about um, message M1 and M2. But still, we want to convince him that the underlying committed messages add up to uh, the public input UTXO value M. And it's super easy uh, due to the homomorphic property of Pedersen commitments. So the, co uh, the, um, the coordinator would just multiply, and uh, note this is um, multiplicative notation. Um, hope people don't, really, uh, don't hate it. So if we uh, multiply these two blinded messages, then note that we would have H to M1 plus M2 multiplied with the G to R1 plus R2. And if we give the sum of the randomness values to the coordinator, then the coordinator, um, so basically we open this um, the commitment corresponding to the multiplication of the messages, then the, um, then the we could 
we can convince the coordinator that these values add up. Uh, so this was uh, like the first step why we were kind of excited about the B uh, blind BLS signature instantiated with the padders and hash because it, it gives us a really simple way to prove splitting of UTXOs, right? Because if you want to make a payment, um, then it most likely you need to either split or um, merge your UTXOs, but split is the first thing we wanted to solve. Um, right. Um, yes, so this is why we were starting to think about this uh, blind BLS signature scheme with the padders and hash. And right. Let's let's continue or, or uh, any questions? I just want to point out, I spoke earlier as uh, in Bitcoin circles, usually people write in additive notation and uh, we wrote it here in multiplicative notation, um, but they're the same thing. Uh, so uh, that's the first clarification. And the second one is um, BLS signatures uh, don't work on Bitcoin's uh, standard like elliptic curve. Um, and it requires uh, a different curve, which has what's called, uh, or a different uh, set of curves that has what's called a, a pairing uh, operation. So um, I just thought that was important to point out. Yeah, thank you. Please continue, Istvan. Uh, I, I think it would be a good idea if you guys explain stuff properly and then I try to translate it to... Uh, less technical people i think that's a, that's a that's a good way to go about it so so go ahead and, and explain it one further okay so don't get too much excited because this uh, protocol is broken but uh, i can i can explain it yeah um what was the second thought okay so um, now we know how to split utxos let, and, and let, let me just say it is not broken uh it's it's something that you don't like because you made a mistake, but the but our double spending protection actually fixes that mistake, so it's it's not actually broken. Yeah, but it's not lightweight. It's not. Uh, it it would include uh, additional um, assumptions, like you've all pointed out. So it, it um, builds upon pairing based crypto, and ideally, we would like to kind of remain at the same technologies, same assumptions, what, what is already deployed in Bitcoin. Um, but anyways, let's continue. So, um, and how can we prove, so let's say we have, we registered a lot of um, input UTXOs. And now since we not, we also want to make payments possibly, potentially, we might need to consolidate some of our inputs, right? Because I don't know, the payment value is something super weird amount and, and we just need to merge coins. So how to do that with this blind BLS signature scheme with the pedders on hash? So let's say this is just an example of merging two um, output, two input UTXOs, but the same ideology would easily, would, could be easily generalized to multiple um, input UTXO merging. So let's say we have a, a hash on the message one and the signature on the message one by the coordinator. Since this is a blind signature scheme, the signature was not seen um, by the coordinator yet. Hence, we have unlinkability. Similarly, we have a, a, a hash on message two and the signature on message two, which again was has not been seen by the coordinator. And now the question is, how can we prove that? And, and we want to register a UTXO corresponding to the value M1 plus M2, but we don't want to reveal to the coordinator the underlying value M1 and M2. If this is a cryptographic hash function, which is then, um, so the coordinator doesn't see does not know anything about message one and or message two because this uh, the Pedersen hash is a cryptographically uh, secure hash function given some range proofs. But uh, let's put that aside. So we just we give 
the sum of the messages, what we want to register as an output UTXO value, and these four um, group elements, and a small proof to convince the coordinator that uh, the underlying messages add up to this uh, public value. How can we do that? Again, uh, we just need to, it's super simple. We just need to multiply the signatures. What are the signatures? The signatures are, um, now we just plug in the definition here. We just plug in the definition of the blind uh, BLS signature scheme. So um, sigma M1 multiplied by sigma M2 equals the hash of the message one raised to the coordinator secret key multiplied um, with hash on the message M2 raised to the uh, coordinator's secret key, um, which is, since in our case, the hash function is the Pedersen hash equals uh, H to M1x, M1 is our uh, secret value, and the other term is H to M2x, H is a generator in the group. So this equals uh, H to X multiplied with M plus uh, M1 plus M2. So the point is that if we give these two values to the coordinator, then the coordinator can just multiply them and check this equality. So note that this on the right-hand side, H to the X multiplied M plus uh, M1 plus M2, can be easily calculated um, by the coordinator. So X is uh, the coordinator's private key. M1 and M2 is a public values because we this is the value of the output UTXO we are registering. So the coordinator can compute this term. And similarly, the co coordinator can just uh, compute the multiplication of the two signatures. So the, the point here is that this um, verification equality can be trivially checked by the coordinator. So this is a super simple way to convince the coordinator that, look, um, I have two valid signatures on messages I'm not going to tell you, but still you can verify that the underlying messages add up to this public value. So with that in mind, we basically solved um, the problem of splitting uh, UTXOs and merging UTXOs. So basically, Wabi Sabi is ready, right? <laughs> uh, what do you think, guys? That's what we thought too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so shall we kill the joke or, or you want to think about it? By the way, this is uh, if you go to Wabi Sabi's um, so github.com dot com slash zk snags slash wabi sabi and uh, the fifth issue if if you want to take it as a homework or exercise to think about it don't scroll that much down because here you will see why it is broken um but um yeah we were like in ecstasy in in half a day and then the crude reality hit it yeah okay <laughs> There are some subtleties, like we would need some padding scheme, but uh, yeah. Okay. Any questions, comments on the on this scheme? Okay, so let's wrap it up with with what what was the problem with this and what was the overcomplicated solution. Okay, so so let's kill the protocol in uh, two minutes. So the first, um, let's start with the obvious mistake, which was pointed out by Kobe Gurkan, a good friend of mine. So again, th thanks, Kobe. So the obvious problem with this is that never ever. So yeah, this is the description of blind BLS signatures, and. Anytime you would like to implement it as a practitioner or or you want to deploy it in the wild, you need to choose this hash function. And uh, one of the key takeaways here is that you should not choose uh, blind BLS signatures with the Pedersen hash because then you, you completely break uh, the underlying security properties of the blind BLS signature scheme. Why? Because, um, so this is the solution pointed out by Kobe. Um, if a user has a single 
valid signature. So if a user has a message M and obtains a blind signature, which has the form H2MX, then a user can just forge any signature of her choice, like let's say M star, and then can obtain a valid blind signature on a message which was not ever signed by the coordinator. So this is like uh, completely breaks um, the guarantees, the security guarantees whatsoever of the blind BLS signature scheme. So like, so if you learn something of this discussion so far, like first lesson is that don't instantiate blind BLS signature with padders and hash because then users can screw you up. Yes. And then we were trying to fix this protocol. Um, not sure if that's a little bit complicated because then we would need to um, explain what are accumulators, but basically you can save it, but it's not cryptographically sound um, construction and protocol anymore because it would rely on a completely broken blind uh, signature scheme. So we were like, um, well, uh, let's put this aside and, and let's continue in another direction because this is just not kosher at all. Yeah, and that, I think this is a good point, right, to talk about trade-offs uh, because, uh, you know, ultimately we want to have a protocol that does communicate with a central coordinator, but we do not want to have a, a decentralized protocol as this would increase complexity, right? So, so staying centralized means we reduce complexity. But then, for example, if we would use this quote-unquote broken protocol, but fix it with the accumulators, this would again increase the complexity, right? And, and this just carries a, a lot of trade-offs, um, you know, of, of just additional communication rounds where stuff can go wrong. This is one of the big bottlenecks we have in Wasabi currently, that the Tor anonymity network just breaks sometimes or does not you know, work flawlessly all the time. And with extra round of communications, this would become more and more of an issue. Um, so, so here again, if we can find a more beautiful uh, cryptographic solution um, that is is less complex, that relies on less um, assumptions and, and primitives, uh, then this would of course be better. Uh, so, so that's why we decided to abandon this approach and look for something new. And honestly, there were many red flags already from the beginning, as already Yuval pointed out. Like, um, obviously, blind signature. Uh, sorry. Um, elliptic curve. Um, so, pairing-based crypto is something completely new. And uh, also, we did some research and we found out that there is no C sharp implementation of BLS. So, we, um, as Max already pointed out, like um, trade offs. So, if we would have wanted to go with the scheme, then we would have needed to implement our own BLS um, from scratch. So we also want to minimize, obviously, the time to market. So we would like to make this available for our users as soon as possible. And, and yeah, so, yes. All right, thank you. Um, just something here, because I see we have someone new, uh, and I just would like to say, hi, Stefano. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, maybe? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, I was a bit late. Um, I missed the first part, but I had already seen the GitHub issue. So um, more or less what you were talking about was uh, not completely new to me. Um, well, about myself, I am a master student uh, at Elte. I'm graduating um, in July, if everything goes right. And I've been interested in the blockchain, Bitcoin in particular protocol since two or two, three years ago. And yeah, I'm pretty passionate about cryptography. I have a bachelor in maths, so uh, the mathematics down there doesn't scare me. Um, anymore um, so I found it fun so I, I think I will um, take part to this kind of meetings 
uh, often in the future. Yeah, that, that, that sounds great. It's, uh, it's quite exciting if you get the hang of it. Uh, I totally agree with that. <laughs> All right. I, I'm 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 a bit sorry that I cannot help on the implementation side because I'm not really a C sharp programmer. Uh, it's completely unknown to me. But I don't. Know. Yeah. No. No worry. Uh, all right. Let let let's continue and and I'm wondering how shall we continue because because then we we went back maybe and uh, with the idea that maybe we can do something with our pedders and commitment scheme what what we had in mind and actually uh, we wrote a comparison between our two schemes um, this BLS signature scheme and our pedders and commitment scheme and what we said is the cryptography is for the padders and commitments scheme what we just described in the beginning is relatively simple the blind bls signature scheme is complex uh, communication rounds uh, the padders and commitment blind padders and commitment scheme does not introduce any additional communication round while the blind bls signature scheme does introduce a parallel communication round which means it's not that bad uh, this is because after the input registration we have to give out the accumulator for the to to the peers uh, so they can they can create their outputs and again Coin splitting in the pedders and commitment scheme in, in both scheme is perfectly solved. Coin merging in the pedders and commitment scheme is not solved, uh, so there is privacy loss there. Uh, in the BLS signature scheme, it's solved, uh, but uh, but again, it could be improved by introducing some denominations. But we really don't want to do that because we are kind of back to back back to some some uh, some not very elegant scheme and that's that's pretty much it and then we went back and started working on the patterns and commitment scheme again and how should I, uh, I would have a question for for the whole group um, could you maybe explain a bit more the the idea of having um, denominations uh, and how you know how this would work and why this is not optimal? Yeah, sure. So in the pedders and commitment scheme, you can uh, we 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 went through how you can split the amounts, but uh, we did not figure out how you can match the amount. So, for example, if you have an input with one Bitcoin and another input with two Bitcoin, and then you go with two different anonymity network identities and you, you want a three Bitcoin output, then you wouldn't be able to split any of those two, two inputs to get a three Bitcoin output, but you would somehow have to merge them and at that point the only idea that we had in mind that okay you get a pedders and commitment for the one bitcoin input and the pedders and commitment for the two bitcoin input and the net output registration you register them together so you are basically exposing that um, you had a one bitcoin you have one bitcoin and you have three bitcoin and where where can those come from well probably from the one bitcoin input and probably from the three bitcoin input so that's not ideal for this we can introduce denominations that uh we just create a bunch of standard pedders and commitments stand pedders and commitments with standard amounts and in that way the coordinator at least at output registration it it will be quite uh 
quite difficult for the coordinator to tell well often impossible to, where, where those are coming from and that could work but but again like introducing thousands of predators and commitments and things like that is not very elegant and uh, probably we would just end up having implementation issues all over the place so what else can we do with this and Istvan spent some time on it at home and he came up with something which I cannot claim to understand uh, but then we progressed a bit further and and I'm not uh, okay so do you guys want to chime in maybe you are better equipped to to explain our, our further progress here I think the next thing we should uh, like if we go over issue number 10 um, I, I think we should have enough time to cover it based on what we already did it's quite similar because it also uses uh, bilinear groups uh, the Pedersen commitments are similar uh, but the signature algorithm and the verification equation are, are different um, and uh, it introduces some problems but it also solves some problems and I, I think that that's a good direction to to go in for today also right. Eastern, do you present to everyone uh like when uh when you're screen sharing and somebody else is talking uh then like i think it would still be useful to have your screen show so you can click on Istvan, and in that way his monitor is going to be be the dominant on your computer even if you're talking i'm going to do that too so the recording will be will be correct so yeah i meant for the recording thank you well i'm not sure how much time we want to spend with this because um this ad so because this is not something super known signature scheme so um can I ask one more question about the last topic? Please, please do. Uh, like, if I understood correctly, whenever you are uh, getting the outputs from the coin join, you have to have at least two outputs. Am I wrong? Or is it uh, that you have to have at, at least the same amount of outputs coming out as you put in, uh, in inputs? No, or, uh, we want to make make it be completely arbitrary i i, I mean we will have uh, some restrictions some standard amounts and things like that at upper layers but on this layer where we are working right now we want peers to register completely arbitrary amounts and number of inputs and completely arbitrary amounts and number of outputs uh, later we will restrict it but for now we want to to build something that's flexible and at upper la layers we will restrict them so i think the short answer would be that there is no correlation between the number of input utxos and the number of output utxos they don't necessarily need to be equal the only thing uh, which uh, is necessary that um, roughly the sum of the input utxos equals uh, the sum of the output utxo values minus some fee and does this answer the question yeah exactly that but uh what was the problem with bls and peterson signature uh, wasn't it like that you can't like just have one output coming out if you are putting two inputs uh, so the problem is that again um just to refresh so this this was the blind bls signature scheme um like um put this into your photographic memory and then um if so you need to choose here a hash function you see um, like you need to choose something you need to go with a, a particular hash function and if it if this particular hash function is the Peterson hash, which is basically takes a random generator in the group, let's say H, and raise it to H to the M. So if if that this is how you define your hash function, right? 
So H of M, uh, let's define it as H to the M mod P. P is a prime number, which is the order of the group. So the number of elements in the group, then you will have a hash function. Um, but the problem is that with this instantiation, the signature scheme is completely broken. So it's kind of really uh, non-intuitive because you would you would just thought you one might just think that okay, I take the blind BLS signature scheme, I instantiate it with whatever hash function, and then it should be all right, right? This is like uh, what I thought, but it turns out not to be true. So okay, yeah, yeah, I get that, and uh, that was understandable. Uh, my question was a little bit wrong. I'm new with these terms, so <laughs> bear with me. But please do. What I are learning, like so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, maybe what I actually meant was the problem with uh, having multiple outputs and merging them into one output. Uh, I mean, wh what was the problem in that? Uh, was it because that so the problem you, is that you just can't that have one output? No, 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 you can't have. The problem is that when you want to do this, um, you don't want to um, tell the coordinator what are the values you are merging because then the coordinator might guess from which input utxos you are trying to merge and then you would leak uh, you would lose some privacy against the coordinator does this answer the question oh so, yeah yeah that exactly so yeah. let's say, let's say you have um two uh, input utxos like um i don't know 0 0.1 0 0.2 and you want to register an output utxo with value 0 0.3 then you want to do this in a way that you don't want to tell the coordinator that now hey coordinator now i'm merging 0 0.1 utxo and 0 0.2 because then the coordinator might guess okay this is rafael this is you well because yeah so this is what we want to avoid and um, to put this a little bit more formal, you want to convince the coordinator that you have valid signatures on messages that you don't want to tell them. Because usually if you ver verify messages, uh, digital signatures, then in the verification algorithm, you also put uh, the message itself as an input, right? Um, but if in this case, you would put the message as an input in the verification algorithm, then you would lose privacy or some privacy. And, and uh, we need to come up with a way to verify messages, digital signatures, without giving out the underlying message. That, that's the cryptographic challenge here. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, thanks. That explained it. Yeah. So basically, this is uh, the challenge of the main challenge of Wabi Sabi of this protocol. But uh, today, uh, thanks to Yuval, we we have a pretty neat uh, solution, which is I think m the most lightweight. But I'm not sure if we will be able to cover it tonight. Yeah, we have basically two more protocols left, right? Um... Do you do you want to go through your your protocol that 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 you came up based on the knowledge assumption paper or or, or we should go right to the to the to the last one? That yeah, maybe maybe go right to the next uh, next one. Uh, I can wrap it up in five minutes. So like it was kind of obvious. Um, we motivated a thousand times. We love patterns and commitments because it's homomorphic. So we were looking for a um, blind signature scheme, which allows us to have a blind signature on a message committed in a patterns and commitment. And apparently there are two schemes achieving this, this paper and another one by Georg Fuchsbauer et al. Um, but it's a little bit more complicated. And then we were playing around with this scheme um, wait a sec, and I can show you. Uh, yeah, this is the blind signature scheme, which I suppose in the group uh, only one or two people know. But don't worry, uh, this is not that well-known paper yet. And uh, yeah, and then we created some proof mechanism which allows us to do. Um, UTXO merging. So splitting is basically given for free. 
because this blind signature schemes gives us blind signatures on committed messages on patterns and commitments um like here this is additive notation somewhat different than the previous notation uh, don't get intimidated um, so basically here, this is the message which is uh, committed in the Pedersen commitment. And at the end of the day, we will have a blind signature on this message without uh, the cord letting the coordinator know what she was signing. Um, so we have input UTX splitting for free. And then we were creating some zero knowledge proof systems to allow us to do the merging. But I don't think it's that important because it's a little bit... Uh, um, would be too long, and uh, yeah, I don't want to waste your time. Uh, you can see all the discussion here on uh, blind things on patterns and commitments. Um, hashtag 10, number 10. Yeah, here is the protocol which achieves this merging. Mm, yeah, maybe I, I think it would be more enlightening if, if you would hear the easiest way to do it. All right, let, let's do that. Uh, let's, let's do that first on what could you go on the, the issue? Yes, please share, share your screen because I cannot because that doesn't get recorded. Sure, 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 sure. Go on the issue that I created uh, uh, and, and after that you will, but let, let's first go through on mine. A double blind is called yes. in com uh, Cool. Right. So I, I want to go through this because this might be easier to understand than you was is, uh, is, is, is something that's, that's very similar to this. Uh, we, we kind of came up with it in parallel. Uh, I mean, I, I can't really claim that I came up with, with anything because I was just coming up with desires that it would be cool if the crypto would work this way <laughs> but anyway so yeah yeah go 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 back yeah so th the idea was that what if instead of we we blind the peders and commitments once we could blind them twice Oh, wow, that would be really cool, wouldn't it? So, okay, we, we blind them twice, and in that way, we would get the the signatures for the single blinded commitments and not the double blinded ones. And those single blinded commitments could be registered together later on because, and, and, and the sum could be proven easily. Uh, and because no one has seen, because the coordinator did not see those single blinded commitments and we have um, signatures on them, it can accept their sum and we don't actually expose the amount. So this was my idea and you all had a better one based on the the paper that we actually looked through last research club, so that didn't go to waste. And I would like to give... Yes, do you have any anything to add to my really incomplete uh, conceptual explanation or, or go through UI's stuff, which, which seems to uh, be a more final? But I don't know. Let's see. So, do you have anything to add to this so far, or give the word to you, Val? No, let's let's give the word to you, Val. Awesome. Okay, so uh, I guess can you open issue sixteen? Um, I guess the first thing is we should uh, give some credit for this idea of uh, double blinding the commitments. And that comes from a paper relating to uh, Zcoin, uh, Lelantus, I think it's called. And the idea there is uh, you uh, kind of, um, it's not a signature-based approach, but there's a lot of similarities. Uh, and you use other people's, like every uh, coin is basically a Pedersen commitment to an amount. So the amounts are confidential, like confidential transactions. And then you um, take additional coins as like decoy inputs 
um, and you kind of prove that you only spent yours in the output creation. Uh, but this is kind of where we, we got this uh, uh, double blinding concept. Um, I think it's, uh, I would prefer if we refer to uh, those as like uh, unlinkable commitments, just because uh, double blinding, I think, means something specific in, in that article. Um, so, a, a similar thing is instead of blinding, instead of taking a Pedersen commitment, blinding it and receiving a signature on like the unblinded version, um, the anonymous credentials light signature scheme uh, does something a little bit different where you, you give uh, just a normal Pedersen commitment um, uh, and in the anonymous credentials uh, work, uh, uh, the the thing that you're actually signing uh, there is it's what like that's what they call uh, an attribute of the uh, credential. Um, so in, in this signature scheme, um, the the user commits to a list of attributes um, as a, a Pedersen multi commitment, and then uh, has a a protocol to get a signature not on that commitment but a different commitment a blinded commitment that still commits to the same values. So it's practically the same thing. Instead of like blinding, getting a signature and unblinding, you provide like one commitment and you get back a signature for uh, a differently blinded uh, commitment to the same uh, messages. Um, and I think probably we don't want to go into too much detail about how the, uh, the, the protocol, uh, actually works. Um, it took me literally hours to just get through one page of the paper and, um, I still don't think I understand everything. So, um, I, I think like th that is a, a reasonable summary of, of what, what that, um, construction actually, uh, gives us. Uh, and then we can sort of recover the nice properties of the second protocol that we didn't discuss uh, in, in too much detail. So uh, unlike the the uh, BLS signatures, the uh, signatures are not homomorphic. So, um, but the commitments are. So we can still have splitting. We can um, make uh, a, a series of commitments to the split amounts that we want. They remain hidden. And then we receive, uh, we prove that the sum of these commitments is equal to our input amount. And then we uh, receive a list of signatures on different commitments for the same amount. Um, and uh, those signatures don't have um, like the double spending issues that we, we ran into with some of the merging stuff or the signature forging. Um, so um, at output registration time, I just reveal um, those signatures, um, and each signature is like a, a token. Um, but because the uh, verification equation for this signature scheme works on the commitment, not on the message, uh, instead of giving the sub amounts that we're like, uh, let's say I, I have uh, uh, two inputs and I want to take uh, like some, so I want to split my first input and I want to split my second input. And then I want to take uh, two sums out of those for some reason. Um, at output registration, I provide two signatures and two Pedersen commitments for the split amounts, but I only need to reveal uh, the sum. I, I don't actually reveal the message at signature verification time. So this gives us um, a, a slightly uh, easier to reason about way of, of um, uh, uh, proving to the coordinator that we're not overspending uh, in our output registration without actually uh, revealing the sub amounts that we uh, uh, we we only reveal the sums. Um, I think that's a fair summary. Uh, I guess does anybody have any questions at this point? And if like we want to go into more detail, I can. Uh, Make, maybe explain a little bit more about the signature uh, algorithm itself. Yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, I think uh, we can actually leave this for the next session to, to go into details in this. Uh, well, obviously, if if we, we don't find something terribly wrong with this and 
and we have to start all over again. <laughs> well, if we find something terribly bro broken, then we, uh, I think we have an even better reason to, to do a research club on it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yes. Yeah, so, 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 so we will see. Uh, it will solidif if it will solidify the next for for next week. Then, then we'll go through it. If if it won't, then well, that's that's it. Um, but well, something to add about the signature scheme. Uh, an attractive property is that it does not require bilinear groups. Uh, uh, it's still, uh, Jonas said uh, last week that uh, some parts of the security proof uh, rely on, um, uh, so like you, you, for a curve with uh, say 128 bit security, like uh, SECP uh, 256K1, um, you actually get uh, a slightly reduced security level. Um, I have not yet gotten to those parts. so. I don't know uh, if this is an issue for us, um, but at least in principle, um, if uh, that's not a, a concern for the soundness of the, the protocol uh, and the, the privacy of the protocol, actually, the privacy is much more important. Uh, if that's not a concern, then that means that we can just use uh, the same curve as Bitcoin, uh, which has some uh, nice advantages as well. Right. So, was everything clear? <laughs> no. Yes. Some of it. I mean, I only have some new questions, so I'll maybe leave them to the end and give other guys a chance to ask. Um, I've never heard this concept of double blinding uh, or you know double blinded Patterson commitments. Um, yeah, this exactly was my <laughs> question. It, like, it, do do we have some peer reviewed like proofs that this is sound, or, or are we just hoping here? Yeah, I mean the Lelantus paper was showing the double blinding uh, Patterson commitments, but uh, but but he was. But, but the ACL paper idea uh, is actually not reliant on 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 this. Doesn't use double blinding. It's what what does it use? How would you say that? I think it's a slightly technical, but um, the idea is. Um, so, okay, first, I don't remember the exact details of the double blinding, but um, from a security point of view, there's no, um, there's no problem, really, because um, you, it's just like adding another uh, uh, factor to the, uh, one of the generator points. So, um, you can think of it as taking a Pedersen commitment and I think multiplying it by a scalar. Um, that's no different than what you do in a normal uh, Pedersen commitment. It's just like um, the 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 way that the Lelantis paper uses it is the second blinding is like a serial number, and if you um, uh, and, and that's used for the way that like Zcoin does um, a double spend prevention or like makes marks a coin spent basically. Um, so, uh, since our scheme is uh, online, uh, we don't actually need that. And what we have um, in the uh, ACL scheme is a sort of similar approach where uh, you start with the commitment and then in the signature protocol, eventually you get uh, a signature on another commitment that's multiplied by a different scalar. So... Um, Actually, I'm not sure if it's a scalar, and I'm not going to check just now because. Uh, but like, think of it as uh, like adding another key, like tweaking a key. If you're familiar with that terminology, um, uh, you're just taking a, a, a curve point and uh, adding like uh, more, uh, like another point to it. Um, and because of like the reasons that a Pedersen commitment works out uh, as um, like a, a secure uh, system, uh, this you know generalizes to uh, repeated transformations like that. Um, 
uh, if that did not hold, then uh, like the Pedersen commitments themselves would not work. So I think that double blinding term is a little bit scary, but really all it means is like uh, first you blind it and then you blind it some more. Um, so in the ACL scheme, uh, that process, uh, like in the, the Lalandis stuff, you, you first you you do that blinding and then you, you blind some more and then you prove something to the blockchain um about the like the 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 composition of these in the acl scheme you start by blinding the amount once in a like a normal Pedersen commitment and uh in the end you get a signature for a different Pedersen commitment that has uh like additional blinding applied to it but still commits to the same thing so um it, it's kind of the same effect you there's no way to link the two commitments uh, because the user controls the randomness going into the uh, the derived commitment, um, but the the underlying messages are still the same, and the ACL protocol basically guarantees that you can only get a signature that commits to the uh, the same stuff that you um, uh, made a commitment to at the beginning of the protocol. Uh, did did that explain it a bit better? For me, it does. Um, yeah, the double blinding thing was now a bit more clear, but yeah, I think I have to just check this show again uh, <laughs> after it's published, so I get everything out of this. I mean, this ACL thing is uh, still a bit confusing, but I don't think it's. I just need some time to process it. But yeah, thanks for all the explanations. Sure. Uh, all right, cryptographer freaks, do we have any more questions? Um, I have a question. I I don't really know um, if it makes sense at all, and uh, it's on a higher level. Uh, so. Is there any interest or do we see any particular problems in willing to output from such a coin join uh, an output which is mm, a multi-signature in some way? So it's a double question. Does it even make sense to think about it? Uh, is there any use cases for it? And uh, uh, is it technically uh, thinkable with the, within this um, scheme? Yes and yes. Uh, I think there are many interesting use cases for multi-signatures. Um, I'm not sure if Nopara agrees, but um, uh, the, all of this stuff is only concerned with the amounts of the outputs, not the scripts themselves. So. Uh, when you go to register an output, um, if you want all the script types to be the same, the coordinator uh, can just say, uh, you know, when you register an output, you must provide a pay to pubkey hash output or something like that. Uh, or it, it could let you put any script type that you want. But um, uh, the, the cryptographic commitments uh, that we discussed so far are only concerned with the uh, Satoshi amount uh, that that output will get not with the the uh, script pub key you could even register an op return <laughs> so so yeah it's, it's uh, and further maybe do some public key tweaking to make it more efficient you know the maybe the only thing that i that could be an issue here is that uh uh, you, you want to give a maximum size for the script uh, that may be smaller than than what Bitcoin would than what the Bitcoin standards are because uh, you you don't know who is paying for the for the script so, so at input registration you you have to take the network fees from people and. Uh, and and let's say if everyone would come with the maximum 
uh, script size script that would be a denial of service attack or, or things like that. Do you have I any? Don't gets to there because if the coordinator produces a non-standard transaction then uh, it's not going to get relayed uh, but a pay to script hash completely gets around this problem um, because the script pub key only contains the hash of the script and uh, there's no standardness rules restricting uh, redeem scripts so um, unless you want to do like a raw multisig uh, script pub key or something like that uh, I, I, I don't think that's really an issue yeah, I was thinking more about, uh, well, it's not there yet, but I was thinking more about sh Schnorr uh, multi-signatures. So that wouldn't be... So if we get tap script uh, outputs or uh, Segwit V1 uh, outputs, uh, they're going to be uh, even simpler than, because uh, you're only really going to have one uh, script type. It's always going to be 32 bytes. Uh, and it's functionally equivalent to a pay to pubkey hash and a pay to script hash at the same time. So you can always, uh, after, like, as part of the input of the next spending transaction, you can provide a tap script that redeems it, uh, or you can sign with the, uh, I forget what it's called, but the key at the, the root. Um, and that would be, um, uh, I mean, it's not a pubkey hash, but it's like pay to pubkey. Um, so in this regard, uh, uh, if taproot is enabled, and we also have Schnorr signatures in in the same uh, go, then uh, like the there's only going to be one uh, script type that's relevant for uh, Segwit v1 outputs. Um, yes, yeah, so we we probably have to restrict arbitrary non-standard script some op return. Uh, outputs uh, as, as far as size is concerned but uh, but any script that someone can imagine because because of the uh, pay to script hash, hash script hash kind of constructions which are actually the standard way of doing things so 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 you can you can do almost anything except non-standard stuff. So maybe a trivial example, but uh, or trivial use case. I was thinking um, uh, of whether it was possible to uh, have a um, um, lightning channel creation as a output uh, from a coin join round. So. Since uh, that's the weakest point in the in the privacy of Lightning, um, you have uh, public keys associated publicly to uh, some multi-signature transaction, which is the funding transaction. It would be nice to be able to uh, provide privacy uh, while going in into the protocol. So it's not possible to tra trace back coins, the history of coins that create a, um, a funding transaction, transaction. So this is something I've uh, thought about quite a bit. Um, already today, you can do this with uh, single funded channels and uh, join market. Um, and there's no technical reason whatsoever why this should not be possible in Wasabi. That's just a um, a, a question of the uh, transaction structure that's currently enforced that uh, requires uh, pay to witness pubkey uh, hash outputs. Um, I think that in this protocol uh, that we're proposing, that's not going to be any different. It's uh, up to the coordinator policy. Um, two interesting things to consider about this are um, it's not just that so like coin joins can help lightning privacy but lightning can also break coin join privacy uh because the uh outputs are announced on like the the lightning graph the the gossip uh, protocol uh so like every node that has public channels um has a stable identifier it's node id and it's uh, basically linking a bunch of multi-sig outputs that it's involved in. Um, so 
I, I still think it's probably a good idea, but uh, there's some really tricky interactions to consider there. Um, and um, it may turn out to be uh, less desirable than it, it seems at first. Um, and this yeah, gets yeah. a little bit more interesting with uh, uh, dual funded channels. Uh, so there's uh, in the last few months, uh, I think uh, Lisa Negut uh, wrote a uh, proposal for um, interactive uh, uh, channel opening that allows uh, uh, dual funding. And uh, prior to that, uh, I think it's a generalization of, of prior work uh, that um, is meant to deal with uh, splicing, which um, I think is also very interesting to to consider in the context of coin joins. Um, I think that the main advantage that you gain is if you want to open a channel to some other node, and you don't want to disclose how many funds you had in a prior UTXO that you used to fund this, uh, then you get a, a, a considerable benefit from uh, coin joining this. And that's already possible today with um, uh, C Lightning's um, like uh, API and something like uh, Join Markets, uh, Patient Send. Istvan actually had a wrote a paper on the Lightning Network previously, so I would love to hear his input here too. No, sorry for interrupting you, but I think this was a really nice uh, example on how like non-trivial ways some can reduce the anonymity set. Because like when Stefano was asking the question, I was like, wow, this is a nice idea. But then I realized that if, for example, in today's, if you go to graph.lndexplorer.com slash API slash graph, you can actually have a look at the, uh, all the nodes consisting of the public uh, public graph. And you can investigate that essentially like less than 1% of all the nodes use Tor, uh, which means that the rest of the 99% of the nodes um, it exposes their IP addresses. So essentially, if you would use, uh, if you would do this, um, like coin join out to uh, a funding transaction, then you would instantly lose one guy from the coin join because most likely that guy will just use uh, Lightning with IP addresses, and then you would instantly know that this guy lives in I don't know Chicago or something like that. So yeah, I, this was a really nice uh, point uh, from Yuval. Yeah, great insight. And not only that one output, but all of their other channels as well. Yeah, I mean, they're, Lightning has a lot of privacy potential, but currently it's just so fucked up um, that eventually we'll probably have to do it in Wasabi um, to be privacy focused. Um, but in general, I think this is a very promising idea to do coin joins into Lightning openings, Lightning channel openings, and especially into something like Lightning channel factories or maybe Hyperloop atomic swaps into or out of the Lightning Network. So I think there's a lot of huge promise here, very long term, because right now the Lightning Network simply is not yet there. Yeah, you see, um, the philosophy that I changed from when I when I was writing Zero Link, in, in Zero Link, I wanted to ensure standard behavior from and everyone who is who is uh, mixing but now here is I, I, I don't want anymore I want to ensure as much flexibility as possible and um, the clients has to work in a standard way until one or two client wants to to work in a different way, like he wants to open a lightning channel, let's say, and and you know if <laughs> it's easy to put the cut into the microwave accidentally, um, if if you are behaving differently from other people, but in in this case, from how we are working on here, is that. If if you are actively if you actively want to do something, then 
I don't want to prevent it anymore. Uh, the the only point, the only goal is to most of the the peers are are using the default stuff and not messing around with 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 different parameters. Uh, so so yeah, let, let's not prevent things, uh, but make sure that most of the peers are using the default. Uh, parameters so so anonymity isn't uh, isn't terribly compromised if, if 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 some someone wants to to create scripts all the time or open lightning channels all the time uh, things like that that's 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 what I, I I want to do differently in this case if we want to really philosophize, then a long-term, like, think of the, just a thought experiment, but if every coin join, instead of having multiple inputs and multiple outputs, uh, had only a, a lot of inputs going to a giant multisig for everybody, and a multisig coming out of that, um, and uh, the coin join theft prevention security worked by... Uh, exactly like li lightning uh, funding. So uh, you don't sign the first transaction until everybody else has signed the output transaction. This is all really silly, uh, right? You you gain no benefit. It's now it's two transactions and uh, the interaction of a multi-sig is probably a catastrophe. Um, but what you get out of it is something that's very similar to a multi-party payment channel. Um, and I think like a very interesting long term, I mean, this requires uh, soft forks and uh, all sorts of novel like technology. Um, but it, it would be really cool if um, the anonymity set of um, coin join type uh, uh, transactions was not just a moment in time, right, where uh, people could sort of come into a pool and leave at some later point, much like a multi-party payment channel. Um, so that, that, anyway, I just think this is a, a fascinating idea and something I've been uh, thinking a lot about how maybe one day we get it, but uh, it's all very, you know, distant future stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like Zcash is shielded uh, outputs now. Similar, I think, but um, so I, I think the Lightning uh, privacy model, I think, is uh, fantastic for uh, payments. Um, it's terrible for coin histories. So, um, uh, like what you basically announced to the world is here's how much money I have. And then at some later point, you announce to the world, this is how much I have now whenever you uh, fund or close channels. Uh, and you don't disclose, you know, the, the transactions that you did in the middle. And this is exactly the opposite of the kind of privacy that coin joins give, which is like you completely obscure the history, uh, or not completely, but you, you obscure the history uh, to a reasonable amount. Um, but then um, uh, people can still see the net flow. And in the pay join ideas, um, they kind of break that assumption. But in in principle, you could you know continue that um, in a much more uh, general direction. Where I, I think uh, uh, payment channels, um, coin join transactions, pay join type interactions, uh, things like covenants, um, uh, all of these things go together in a way that's. Uh, beneficial for privacy it's uh because privacy because fungibility is emergent from privacy it's beneficial for the network as a whole and it's also uh, i think great for scaling because effectively you use coin joins as like just a, a batch transaction mechanism um so you can think of like uh, the the logical end state of this is um every like uh, you have uh, blocks just filled with giant uh coin join transactions, which basically are snapshots of, of channel states and people just move in and out of channel states. Uh, and the um, most of the, the actual activity is off chain. There's some issues with that, which is, you know, what happens if people stop cooperating and then 
your block size is too limited and then some people can't exit. So still not straightforward, but I, I think the general intuition of putting as little information on the blockchain itself about what sort of interactions people actually have, um, like what actual payments they send to each other, uh, that has benefits for scaling, for privacy and fungibility. So I would really like to see all of these things uh, converge long term. Anyway, this is really off topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that that was awesome. That's quite a vision there. Uh, I'm I'm impressed that how far you are looking into the future. So one of uh, one of the most interesting ideas there is uh, Opsi TV. Um, uh, op check, check template verify. That's uh, um, Jeremy Rubin's uh, Covenants construction. And um, uh, the, there's some uh, really cool stuff that he demonstrates, uh, uh, like his proofs of concepts uh, for things like uh, congestion control transactions. Um, I, th I think that that's the most interesting direction that this stuff can go in. And with something slightly more general than what he proposed, um, like we could get some really awesome stuff. All right. Um, okay, uh, any, any more topic do you guys have, or should we close this? Then that means we are closing the conversation, and I hope everyone enjoyed this cryptography lesson, this one and a half an hour cryptography lesson. And now you can go to your universities and tell them that you applied what you learned there. And okay, thank you guys. Um, next week, we are not going to have a topic, but the topic is going to be that uh, Wabi Sabi repository, whatever will happen there. I don't know, uh, as you can see, uh, we have two uh, guys working on it who are um, much, much smarter than than any of, I, I don't know, it's uh, extreme brain, brain power is on that repository, so we will see that what, what's going to happen next week, what we are going to talk about. Um, and that's it um thank you for for watching uh like share and subscribe contribute to to bitcoin privacy and see you next week bye bye thank you bye 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 bye